right, welcome to NAMM 2020 108 Rockstar Guitars and Rose Cora Perry. My From girl, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Finally my Canadian a Canadian. Girl. That's right. <laughs> Got to represent our country, right? That's right. <laughs> Yeah, she's from Toronto. I'm from Edmonton. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. We're sitting here with Lon. We're going to ask you this question. I hope there's no math involved. There's no math. I might not do well if there's, there is. There's intuition. <laughs> if you could travel through time and space okay. and play an immortal guitar that belonged to either a legend, or someone alive, or someone dead represents music, a song, a period of history. If you can hold that guitar, like the ones around us, like Peter Frampton or Randy Rose, which guitar would that be? Hendrix's Cream White Strat. Right on. <laughs> okay. A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying that. It will be featured in my next book. Yes. I think that guitar kind of immortalizes rock and roll. And the reason for that, for me specifically, even though I would not say Hendrix is probably one of my influences or even among my top 10 favorite artists, but it's actually because of my family. So my brother played guitar a long time before I did. He was obsessed with Jimi Hendrix to the point that he wanted a replica of that guitar in order for him to learn. And so I grew up seeing my brother fall in love with playing guitar because of Jimi Hendrix and because of the Strat. And so it holds, I guess, a sentimental um, place in my heart for that reason. So it was it's so cemented into the American pop culture that For guitar. Sure. That means it even crosses over it to crossed Canada. over. <laughs> it it got north of the border. It did, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you were gonna make maybe name an Alex Lifeson guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean I think it goes without saying that Canada as well as the States yeah. has such an incredible array of talent and, and diverse musicians. Yes. And there's so many possible guitars that I could have chosen, but as I said, it kind of comes back to family. Yeah. As an Italian gal, family is everything to me. So, being from Canada, what Canadian artist influenced you growing up? Alanis. Oh, <laughs> I'm yes. a '90s kid. I lived in Canada. I was an angsty teenage girl. I mean, there's no other obvious answer yeah, than I saw her Alanis Morissette. Four months ago, she was she was seven months pregnant, and, and she still, kicked butt. I know. And I my, saw footage. And my old friend Cedric from Remy Zero is playing bass with her wow. now for the last eight years. It's crazy. She's so good. She's phenomenal. Yeah. And I mean, Jagged Little Pill will remain a, oh, yeah. an album that stands the test of time. It is by yeah. far one of the greatest rock rock and roll albums ever made. And the thing I that agree. I love so much about Alanis is that she's just so unabashed in her lyricism and her vocal expression. She's so unique and so powerful, yet vulnerable at the same time. I absolutely adore her, and I think she is phenomenally talented. I love the secret song at the end of the album. Oh, for sure. I that mean, pause, and then like you, you think the album's over, and then she comes out with that a cappella. I'm and that vulnerability of it, yes, too, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's something that is really particular to female musicians, being able to exhibit that sense of vulnerability and emotion and rawness, but still doing it in a powerful way. I like thank you. Oh yeah. After her awakening in India. That was, that's a powerful song. By the way, listen to Stephen Wilson's okay. version of thank you. Will do. Give you chills. Right on. That's I it. don't thank, doubt it. Thanks thank for you, coming Rose. by again this Thanks year. Thanks for having All me. Right, we love you. <laughs>